Hello and welcome back to Song Surveys on Sofas with Superheroes. So this is another request and I love this request. So uh, this is like one of the first CDs that I've ever had. Um, it definitely wasn't for this song. I was a huge fan of um, the single off of this album. And at the time they didn't sell like the single for the CD. So I asked my mom to get this for me for Christmas because I just really love that song so, so much. And she was like, fine, but you can only listen to that song. You're not allowed to listen to any of the other ones. <laughs> and like looking back, I was like, well, duh, because that's the only song I like. But obviously um, I was younger and there was a lot of cursing in this album. And um, so, yeah, so when I got this request, I was super excited because it's not the song that I like loved and was obsessed with. So I, I kind of got to explore a different song that maybe I didn't know as well. I did eventually listen to the whole CD when I was a little bit older. But, um, but yeah, so I'm really excited. So let's get started. Um, so the song that was requested was Bad Out of Hell by Meatloaf, which um, that's the album title as well. Um, or yeah. Uh, and so the song that I loved was um, I Would Do Anything For Love. <laughs> I know it's so cheesy, <laughs> but that song is just so epically good. And so uh, this song, I was so excited to really dive into because um, it's a long song <laughs> and there's a lot to it. And so yeah, so let's get started because there's a lot to talk about. Um, so it opens with these like two very full sounding notes that get repeated um, and there's like percussion in there uh, really again like I said full sounded so it gets repeated and on the third repetition you get this like crazy fast piano which is so awesome um, and then you get this like a uh, more complex percussion and then some electric guitar is thrown in there as well uh, which I think is like really fantastic and so it creates this really intricate um, instrumental sound. And so what I love is then like the piano part starts to change and it becomes like less prominent and then the guitar part kind of takes over and it becomes more in the forefront. And so I really love how um, like you get this whole story just through instruments in the first like minute of the song. Um, I really, really love that. And um, I think it just again like creates this awesome story and it really just kind of um, starts this like epic journey that you're gonna go on with the lyrics and stuff. So I really, I really like, love, love that. Um, so then the instruments fade and you're left with just some piano before the lyrics kick in. Um, I really, really love all of the imagery and figurative language in this first verse. Um, I love the line, there's a man in the shadows with a gun in his eye. And so um, I kind of like that it's a little bit ambiguous. Is he the one who has the gun in his hand? Like he's looking at his hand. Um, is he watching the scene from a different view and seeing someone else with a gun or does he have a gun in his face like and he's like you know someone is putting that in his eyes um so I really like that I like that you kind of um are able to imagine it a different way every time you hear it um so yeah and then I really love love the last two lines Oh, I swear I saw a young boy down in the gutter. He was starting to foam in the heat. And so I just really like love that image and kind of like what led to that point. Again, you can kind of like make the story. Um, and so I really like it also because the first line talks about fire howling. And so I love that they kind of brought that um, beginning back in that last line of the first verse. Uh, so I really, I really love that. And I also love the way that these lines are saying, right? So you get a little bit more of those pauses, words are held a little bit longer, um, definitely creates an interesting uh, way to kind of end that first verse. So then you get a few seconds of just piano and the piano is um, similar, but you get like oohs and ahs in the background and it gets like more full about halfway through. Um, and then you get like this pre-chorus, I guess. <laughs> uh, the parts kind of get a little bit crazy because the song is like nine minutes long. So I, I, I consider like bridges and pre-choruses and chorus, I don't know if that's the correct term. Maybe it's like a second or third or fourth verse or something like that. But so sorry if I'm not accurate on that one. Um, but we'll call this part the pre-chorus. Um, so the lyrics are saying like super quickly and Meatloaf's voice has like this breathy quality to it. And I just, again, I love any subtle difference, especially the breathiness of the voice. It's just, you know, you go from this like um, held and kind of uh, 
paused in between these words like end of that first verse you get a little bit of piano and then you get this like breathier tone and so again once you like know the whole story i really really think that this breathiness adds such a cool element to this song um so yeah so i really think uh the lyrics of this part are kind of sad but like nice but sad <laughs> um so he's talking about how this person is like the only thing in this world that's good and light and like you get this whole like beautiful description of how great this person is and then right after the scripture you get but I gotta get out I got to break out now and so I think the words like break out really really struck me in this part because you're talking about this person who's like this beautiful wonderful and then this person's like but I have to like break out as in like you are trapped not just like I need to leave and peace out like I gotta go and do my own thing and find myself no 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 you are breaking out because you feel like you are trapped so I really thought that was an interesting line um it just like seems so heartbreaking right like this person is so good and and great and yet like you still feel trapped by this person so I don't know I, I really like that line I think that's a really interesting concept um and then the last line is uh we'll both be will both be so alone and so i thought that was um again it like kind of adds to that sadness and i love how the word alone is held so that's really great um so then you get this build of music and you get the chorus with this like full sounding piano guitar percussion um you get the title of the song in the chorus which i thought was awesome and i love love the breakdown that happens instrumentally oh my gosh this is like just amazing so for the first third of the chorus you get this like really really full sounding instrumentation right it's like i said percussion guitar drums oh i just said percussion sorry percussion guitar piano <laughs> um and so then for the second third it kind of slows down and you get like this more deliberate sound of the instruments like they're a little bit more separate they're not like all played together at once you kind of can distinctly hear the guitar or the piano um and so i really like that and then for the last third it's really slow and you basically are getting like single moments of these like instruments in between the words and so i love love this breakdown i think it was so smart and it keeps you so interested in this chorus um the instrumentation of the song is just unbelievable but particularly i really really like how you start really full and then you kind of go down especially because a lot of songs you kind of do the opposite right so you have this like huge like slow start and then you kind of build and then at the end it's this like massive instrumentation but i love that it's reversed right so you start really strong you kind of get a little bit slower and a little bit more distinct and quieter and then at the end you kind of really have that slow just little bursts of instruments so i love that i think that was genius really really like that again you don't hear that very often in a lot of songs so fantastic really liked that um then you get like this quick music transition into the second verse and you get this more full sounding guitar um compared to the first verse so uh yeah so i love the last three lines nothing really rocks and nothing really rolls and nothing nothing's ever worth worth the cost um i secretly just love when beat love uses rock and roll <laughs> that does happen in um i would do anything for love so that just like really brought me back to that song and i was like oh um so yeah so i just love that line and i also though like that um and nothing's ever worth the cost and so I, again i think that's like a really big concept especially with this song um the story that it tells overall and then the fact that kind of like everything that is going on in the song is never really worth it so i think that that's a really like quick line but a very important one um just for the overall story of this song uh so yeah so then the music changes and you get uh it's similar to the pre-chorus but uh there's like um but it's more uh like a bridge part again see i don't know if it's like pre-chorus or this is a bridge i'm not really sure um but you get like the oohs and the ahs in the background uh so it's a little bit more full sounding um but this time the lyrics are different so again if you consider this a pre-chorus it's like or if it's a bridge i'm not really sure um so there is a lot of repetition in this part of the song so much repetition <laughs> and um i literally wrote like so much so uh it's about being damned and how um the singer is going like if the singer has to be damned with someone he would want it to be this person um damned is, is repeated a lot in this part um and you get a female vocalist that comes in uh about two-thirds of the way through 
And so the instruments build in this part, um, as the last lyric is saying. So, so again, this kind of goes to that traditional like building of the um, music, as the lyrics are saying. But yeah, so there's a lot of repetition. Um, you get that female vocal, which I think is really important because of there's so much repetition that if you didn't break it up with something different, I think it would have been maybe even a little bit too much repetition. Um, but the female vocals that come in definitely help. And then you get that build of the instruments, which again, kind of helps break up that um, repetition. So you get an awesome instrumental bridge transition thing. Again, I'm calling it a bridge. I don't know if that's right. Um, and then you kind of go back into the pre-chorus. So it sounds very similar, but you get more of like a chorus singing. So every line is definitely, there's like a chorus singing behind every line. Um, and um, yeah, so it goes, so this goes into the chorus. Again, sounds similar, but you get more of that chorus sound and you get oohs and ahs in the background. Um, so yeah, so a lot of similarities there, but you kind of get some of those subtle differences, which I love. Uh, so I really like those subtle differences. And um, so remember I talked about how the first uh, chorus, you get like that really full sound and then you get like that slower sound and then you get that really slow sound. So that happens again in the second chorus, but it's like so much more dramatic in a great way. So like you really hear the instruments in that first part and then you really hear those like distinctions in the second part and then you really hear that slower part in the third part for the second chorus. So I really, really like that. Um, uh, so yeah, it's much more like a, uh, fuller instrument sound as well. So, so you can definitely hear the differences there. So I really, I like the changes again. I love subtle changes. So this definitely hit the mark for me. Um, so yeah, then the last two lines are repeated. Uh, the music is really full. It alternates with the words. It's like just this epic sounding repetition. And, and again, subtle changes or not so subtle changes at this point. Um, so yeah, so then there's this massive music drop and it's just piano as the last two lines are repeated again. So uh, again, Lots of repetition in this part of the song, but it's like great repetition. So definitely, definitely love all of it. Um, after the lyrics end, you get this motorcycle sound. And um, and again, this song is about like, a big part of it is about this motorcycle journey. Um, and you get percussion and piano and guitar. They all come in and they're really full sounding. So the lyrics come back in for this bridge part two. I don't know. <laughs> um, the music is really, maybe the third, for third verse. Um, the music is really full. There's a guitar transition between every two lines or so. Um, my favorite lines in this part are my skin is raw, but my soul is ripe. And so I love, love the idea of like this raw, fresh news outside. And then this like ripe, like like ready, like perfectly primed inside. So I, I really like the difference there. And again, it kind of creates this like image in your head. Um, so I really like that. I like that the language there. And um, the other lines, I really like the last line, which gets repeated after a musical, um, like a little bit of instrumentation is, and I never see the sudden curve until it's way too late. And that first time it said late gets held. Ooh, so good. Um, but I like that line because it's like the present tense, right? So it's saying like, I never see the sudden curve. Not that I've never seen, or um, like I never will see, like this happened a lot and continues to happen. And so um, again, I just kind of like the idea behind that, right? Um, that you like never see that sudden curve, especially because this song is so heavily about a motorcycle. And so um, I think that it really relates well to the motorcycle aspect of this song, but also just like life in general, right? Like you never see this like, you know, kink in the road until you're like too late and it's, you're in it already. Um, so I like the comparison of the, or like the way that it can apply to both, right? It applies very, like, obviously to the motorcycle side, literally to the motorcycle side, but then it can also be figuratively to life too. So I like that. Um, so yeah, like I said, the music continues and then you get that repetition of that line that I was just talking about. Um, and then after that line, the music drops and you get um, more motorcycle sound, which I thought was great. Um, for just like a few seconds with a quick drop in the music and then the music builds and then drops and then builds in this next part with the lyrics. So you get this like, again, just this like wave of kind of instrumentation. Um, and I guess it's like the second bridge again, don't know which part it technically would be called. Um, so the lyrics are, um, the lyrics in this part of the song, so this like second bridge is when this person like dies on this motorcycle ride, right? <laughs> and so again, this the, the, the story this tells is just fantastic and, and you really should go back and listen to it and really think about the lyrics in terms of a of an overall story because that's that's what it is. Um, 
And so they talk about this. So he talks about dying on this on this motorcycle. Um, and he makes a bell tolling reference, which I think is really great. And um, he's talking about his heart and how the last thing he sees is his heart breaking out of my body and flying away like a bat out of hell. And so, um, again, this bat out of hell was, was used in the chorus before and it gets repeated quite a bit before this moment. And so I really, really love that they use this again because to me, like comparing it to a motorcycle versus the heart, it makes it like this gives it this whole different meaning. And so I really, really love that repetition. I thought it was um, so great and I really liked that you go from like bad out of hell, like it's so quick and, and you get it in this chorus with all this music and then you like get this part and now it's like, I don't know, it's the same exact words, but it just has such a different meaning when you're talking and applying it to the heart, especially a dying heart of that. Um, I really, really like that. I thought that was like a genius choice to use that comparison again um, in such a different way. So, so I really liked that. And again, it, 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 it's a line that's used often in the song, but I really, really liked that um, because of the, the term that it's applied to, or like the difference of the things that it's applied to, it really just makes it feel so different. So I really liked that. All right, so we are finally winding down. <laughs> Again, this song is so long, but so epic. Um, so this part gets repeated and it's similar and he repeats the line still beating. And then the music gets a little bit heavier and more full at the end. Um, so then you also get the line like about it of hell that's repeated too. And again, um, that's the song title. So I think that, um, and then the two comparisons of the motorcycle and the heart, I think that's really, um, like why that line is so become so important, especially at the end of this song. Um, and so that gets repeated a few times, it's saying the background, saying the foreground, so I really like that difference. Um, and then you get the word hell is held for like a really, really long time, so long. Like Andre Bocelli, Conte Parti Row, long. <laughs> Excellent, like so impressive, could never do that. I mean, I can't sing to begin with, but could never hold the note for that long. Um, so again, that's just like such a different thing, a different little piece, like right at the end, you get this like held like word and it's just, uh, it's so good. It's such a, a change from what you are currently listening to. And I, and I love it. I thought that was really, um, a great place to put it and a great, um, thing to put in that place. Um, so yeah. And then the music drops and you get a few oohs and ahs and, um, then the music fades out. Uh, so yeah, I thought this was an excellent recommendation. Again, I, I love Meatloaf, uh, at least the one or two songs that I super know well, but um, this was definitely not one of them. So it was really, really fun to kind of explore and get into a song that I didn't know by a band that I do know. Uh, so yeah, thank you so much for the suggestion. Please guys, suggest, suggest, suggest. I'm, I, I love it. It's been such a joy. Um, so comment, like, subscribe, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye.